Divine Truth Theme Discussions Discussions between Jesus and Mary about specific topics and issues This is Session 9, Part 2 of the discussion God's Laws of Forgiveness and Repentance where Jesus and Mary continue a discussion about God's principles and laws of forgiveness and repentance introducing and discussing God's creation of the human conscience how it operates, why it was created and the role the conscience plays in the processes of forgiveness and repentance. The session was recorded on the 26th of December 2017 from 10.30 a.m. in Wilsdale, Queensland, Australia. What the human conscience is. So now I'd like you to take us, to take us through a discussion of really what is the human conscience. Well, we've seen in our discussion thus far, and if people have watched our previous clips, they can see the discussion thus far is basically said that God has firstly got a lot of truth to share with us. And he obviously has his motivations and reasons for sharing truth, which we'll discuss later mm -hmm. in more detail. But God wants to share the truth with us because God knows that it's going to bring us happiness ultimately. And also that God knows that it's the road to bliss in the sense that it's the road to receiving God's love and the road to transformation of the soul, which will result in bliss for mm -hmm. us. So, so God knows that receiving of truth is a key part, and he designed it to be a key part of our soul's growth. And he designed it that way because he knew that he also designed the soul to be happy when it's receiving truth and is happy when it's engaging the process of truth. So he designed the soul to experience this joy and happiness through the action of truth. So that's the beautiful part of the way we've been designed. So here we are, the, here's the human, the human's there, God's child is there, present, but uninformed. Mm -hmm. When it first begins, yep. it's, if you could say it's process or it's process of living or experiencing itself. So right at the beginning, remember we've said this many, many times before, the human soul is like a blank slate and has no awareness, no self-consciousness, no self-awareness, no idea about how to use its will or any of these other gifts that God has given it. Mm -hmm. So what God did was implanted us. He, he had a process where the soul could be implanted in some experiential systems. The, yep. bo the physical and spirit bodies are the first parts of those experiential systems. Yep. And this experience then gives us the ability to start to learn and experience ourselves and to understand ourselves and to grow and to become more and more aware and, and aware of the, the world around us and to ask questions and to be inquisitive and to desire to know everything that we could know and so forth. God designed it this way so that we would have a, a growing process where he knew that he couldn't put in the brain everything right from the beginning because that would actually be not free will anymore. Mm -hmm. That would be him injecting a whole heap of things into us without us actually having to experience those particular things, which would obviously be very confusing. Imagine become, being born as a child and all of a sudden knowing all the secrets of the universe and having no experience of any of them. Mm. <laughs> it would be a very confusing process. So what God uh, has allowed us to do is this nice, gentle way of learning over periods of thousands or hundreds of thousands or millions of years. Okay. Which, which is a good thing. Yep. <laughs> yeah. so, so God created this beautiful experience. Now, God knows that the truth, when it's received, will also open the heart to God's love. Now, God also created a soul that this love, as it enters the soul, transforms the soul and gives the soul new abilities that it wasn't that wasn't a part of its original creation. But God did this too, so that we're still engaged in our will. We have to choose to receive God's love in order to begin this transform transformative process. We can't just, if God had forced the love upon us, then we are no longer free will beings who can make a choice. Mm -hmm. So he chose not to force this love upon us. He also chose to not force truth upon us, but rather to provide a mechanism via which we can receive truth. Right. And, and these two particular things, the mechanism to receive love and the mechanism to receive truth, exist within our soul as a part of its creation, but they are mechanisms that are controlled by our will. Okay. Yep. Now, the conscience is the mechanism via which we receive truth. Okay. Under the control of our will. Under the control of our will. All right. 
So we've made a, a list of things uh, here that sort of help us to define the conscience more yes. clearly for everyone. Yes. What if I just go through the points and you can uh, you can expand on them? Yes. So the first is that the conscience is a mechanism built into every soul at creation. Yes. So it, it's a you could call it a receptor in the soul. There's there's two primary. Well, there's actually three primary receptors in the soul, two of which uh, uh, relate to our relationship with God. The third relates to our relationship with our other half. So in other words, it's a receptor built into the soul to continue receiving and transmitting information to the other half of our soul. Yep. So, so the two primary ones, the ones that have the most impact upon our growth, are the receptor that allows us to receive God's love, and the receptor that allows us to receive God's truth. The conscience is the receptor that allows us to receive God's truth. Okay. Mm. Uh, the conscience is a way of receiving or the way of receiving direct communication of truth from God. The only other way is to be tuned into God's love, which we've had a Already long discussion about. That's <laughs> yep. right. So, it's, it's the way to receive direct communication of truth from God, which you really just said. Yes, but it's in, the important thing to focus on here is the word direct communication. Uh -huh. God has provided a lot of indirect methods for us to receive truth. You uh -huh. know, we can have a friend come up and tell us the truth. Yeah. We can have a spirit tell us the truth. We can have, you know, God's laws show us the truth through experience. There's a, uh, you know, we can have an insect show us the truth, you know yes. what I mean, yes, <laughs> if yes. we're observant. Mm -hmm. But the, the way we can have direct reception of truth is through the conscience. Mm -hmm. That's the, it's the only way, in fact, that we can receive direct communication from God about truth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which is, it's pretty phenomenal, really, that there's such a mechanism. I suppose you could say it is phenomenal, but if, if you think about it, and the way I thought about it a lot in the first century is, why wouldn't God have done it? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Because, because the, the reality is, if you think about it, uh, any person who is undeveloped, like a child, needs both love and truth in order to learn to function in its life. Mm -hmm. Now, if God didn't provide either or a receptor for either, then how bad would that be? Yeah. You know, he wouldn't be a very good parent if he decided to not do that. So, so to me, it's a reflection of God's goodness as a parent as to why he created these particular receptors one receptor allowing us to see the truth of the universe and the truth of ourselves and the other receptor once we act upon that truth that we receive from the first receptor the other receptor allows us to actually experience the emotion of god's love and its transformative effects on the soul mm. both receptors are very very important for our happiness yeah mm. yeah okay the conscience is operationally independent of our love-based condition yes in other words the receptor always works. <laughs> uh, it is to a degree under our control, but, but it always works. There's nothing wrong with anybody's receptor. <laughs> and that applies to both the receptor involving love and the receptor involving truth, actually. Yeah. Both receptors, they're, they're not damaged and it's impossible to actually damage them. You can only detune from them. You can only act as if they're not there, which mm -hmm. is what the majority of people do, of course. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. The conscience is a gift from God designed to help us know God's truth about matters before we establish direct love-based communication with God. Yes, and here I want to focus on the word gift. If you think about it, um, it, it, it imagine, if, imagine if all we would ever do is only have to experience everything before we ever knew anything or the knew the possibility of anything. Mm. So in other words, how could you know, it, 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 with regard to God's love, you would have to first experience it before you knew anything about it. Now that, how do you then experience it if you don't know anything about it? Yeah. <laughs> so it, you get into this quandary. If there is no truth that can be shared first, mm -hmm. then how can the other experiences actually occur? Yep. So it makes sense that this gift needed to be given to the soul to allow it. It's like the gift of free will, another gift that's given to the soul to, for it to do things. This gift of a receptor, the conscience of truth, the receptor of truth, had to be given to the soul. Otherwise, we wouldn't know what to do. Yeah. And we'd have to do everything through experience. Mm. And that would be terrible and could be potentially very traumatic mm. for most of our existence. Mm. 
Mm. Okay. Um, it's operating for children and adults alike. Yes, uh, a lot of people feel that children don't have a developed conscience. And a lot of people feel that adults have detuned from the conscience. And a lot of people feel that children are pure as well. So there's often, there's often completely yeah. opposite sort of beliefs about children and adults. What we're saying here is uh, the conscience is very open to, to in, in all cases. Um, but as ch children have a highly, they have a highly sensitive conscience without it being developed. Unfortunately, most adults have a very poorly sensitive conscience, mm -hmm. but have developed it some. <laughs> In so other when words, you their adulthood has forced upon, upon, it, upon them some development. <laughs> and when you say developed it, do you mean it's not, from what you've explained, it's, a receptor is not something you can develop, but you can develop um, an awareness of, an awareness. or um, uh, some kind of, cognitive or intellectual Correct. understanding of, oh, I'm being nagged about something internally, maybe it's a conscience yeah. thing. Or, so so yeah. a child has an undeveloped, uh, in other words, they, they don't know how to use it, they've not been informed about it, they don't even probably know it's their yep. conscience, yep. but it's very, very sensitive. In other words, they, they're hearing things from it all the time without yes. really knowing what's going on. Yep. Oftentimes, by the time a person's got to be an adult, adult they're saying, I don't want to hear any more from my conscience. <laughs> <laughs> so they're trying to suppress it, but it's still there, still yeah. operating, but they're trying actively now to suppress it. And we'll talk in our next session why that happens. Yes. But this is, from what you're saying about the conscience, it's very important to uh, establish that this is something that exists from when we are created Mm -hmm. And it's not, when we're speaking about the conscience, it's not the same. There's a lot of earth-based kind of understanding or ideas that the conscience is based on a set of values that you learn. Yes, we, then, we will look at all of that in the future, in a, yes. in a future discussion on this subject, because it's important for people to understand. It's got nothing to do with earth values. It's got to do with God's values. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Transmitted to us via this mechanism yes and so that is that is why for children and adults it's the same um because there's god's values there's one receptor within each of us we can tune into it mm. and that is um that is not understood on earth at all no no in fact it's completely denied yes by most people that there is such a mechanism and in fact most religious people even do not understand what the conscience really is they sort of see it as some kind of inbuilt moral behaviour or yeah. something. But it's, but it's not that at all. It's God telling you what is God's truth about any behaviour. Mm -hmm. But he's not just telling you about behaviour. He's telling you about the truth of the whole universe, not just about you. Yeah. And, and it's quite selfish of us to believe that the conscience is just all about us because it's not actually all about us from God's perspective. It's all about God sharing the truth about everything, not yeah. just us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 All right. So, uh, the conscience is likened, or can be likened, to truth antennae, uh, a truth antenna tuned into the frequency of God's communication of truth regarding any information. That's right. So, I think that's quite you've, clear. You've it's like that. this antenna, yep. it's gonna, you know, so they're just receiving, receiving information that's tuned into a specific frequency. So, God communicates to it, and nobody else actually communicates to the human conscience. No spirit can communicate to the human conscience. The spirits can communicate via other means, mm -hmm. but they can't communicate directly with the human conscience, just like uh, spirits can't communicate through the same channel that we receive God's love either. They mm -hmm. can't transmit love through that same channel. So these things are specifically relating to the human soul, each individual child, and their relationship specifically with God and no one else. Okay. Mm. It's also operating under normal circumstances unless the human detunes emotionally from it or refuses to, to ask questions of God and refuses to question their personal behaviour and their personal conduct. Mm. And that's especially in relation to ethics, so the, the equal treatment of others around us. Yeah, so remember, we have control of our conscience. In other words, we have control of the receptor. 
So we have control now over its ability to receive information. Mm -hmm. We can detune from it. It, it. Remember, it is always in tune with God. Mm -hmm. We can't tune it out. Mm -hmm. It's always in tune with God. What we can do emotionally is detune from what we're receiving. Yes. Right, which is a different mechanism. It's emotional mechanism of denial that we're positively engaging. When I say positively, we're actively engaging it to zone out mm -hmm. from, from the operation. Now, if a child is let develop into adulthood without doing this, every child on the planet would be in tune, mm. right? Whether they believed in God or not, they'd still be in tune with God's viewpoint on matters. Right? But what we do is we tune out, and there's a whole reason for reasons why uh, we tune out, but we zone out of it, we tune out of it. So while the receptor is still in tune, mm -hmm. always working, between our, our conscience and God, or you could say the conscience mechanism, which is not really ours because God created it in, in us, but it doesn't really belong to us because God uses it <laughs> as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. But it's there, uh, the mechanism. And as, as long as we, we, we can either tune into it, emotionally tune into it, or zone out of it. Yep. We have the choice. We've got the choice. Yep, got you. With the exercise of our will. Got you. Mm. Okay, it's dependent upon the current knowledge and reasoning ability of the individual to ask questions that God answers. For this reason, desired or willful ignorance is the enemy of the conscience. Yes, yeah, so we must, must understand that God can only answer questions via the conscience that we have the capacity to ask. Hmm. And this is an important fact. Because it's like uh, for a young child, it's got very little developed capacity to ask uh, very complex questions. But as it builds in its knowledge, it, it gains an increasing ability to ans ask and have answered more complex questions. Mm -hmm. And it gets to a point where without God's love, it cannot ask any more <laughs> questions that are complex in nature that beyond its own capacity to receive. And this is where the love comes in and has to transform the soul. So now we're now, we're now able to ask additional questions and therefore and get the answers from those additional questions. But either way, you can see that ignorance, desired ignorance, is going to be an enemy of the conscience. Because uh, what we're basically saying is, I don't want to know. Yeah. Don't tell me. It's, it's better to not know, is yeah. what we're saying. And that is a very strong... Uh, emotional injury in the human race yes. and as a result of this very strong emotional injury many people are completely detuned from this method of communication that God has with them personally mm. 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 and following on from that we could liken the conscience to a door internally that God is continually knocking on yeah. in order to have us open up to God's truth about matters that's right I, can't, I constantly think of it like this you know. knock 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 are you there? Are you there? God, you know, are you there? Are you listening? <laughs> and, and the conscience is like that, you know, God's trying to get us to, to listen. He, of course, he, God, when I say God's trying to get us to listen, the conscience mechanism is a mechanism by which we can listen, but it is a choice that we need to make. It, we, we can't just, uh, you, you know, expect that it's going to remain open if we decide to close it. It's yeah. like any door we can try to close it and uh, and act as if it's not there it's always there like i've said the mechanism is always there and it's always in it's always present it's always in tune with god but we can close the door on it yeah and make and act as if make out as if and act as if it's not there it's not there mm. yeah okay and it's one way that god is attempting to educate all of her children <laughs> um directly Mm. Of course, there's lots of indirect ways that God's educating us. Yeah, there's thousands of indirect ways that God educates us, but there are a couple of primary direct ways that God educates us. One of them, of course, is this way, the mm -hmm. way of communicating directly with our conscience receptor and allowing us to hear the information directly from God. Mm -hmm. And remember, there's a couple of direct methods and then there's lots of indirect methods. Mm. Now, for most of humanity, we're using a lot of indirect methods uh, in our communication with God. And, and the problem with indirect methods is they're open to interpretation. They're open to, you know, 
disbelief and so forth. They're open to long time periods going past without us actually doing anything about it. The, the good thing about direct communication is that it's far less prone, and it, in fact, it's not prone at all to mistakes. And this is why two people who have their conscience open, who ask exactly the same question about exactly the same subject, we will get exactly the same answer yeah. independently of each other if their conscience is open, because it's God giving the answer through the mechanism. Yeah, there's an amazing potential for unity, isn't there, on the planet? That's right. If everyone was open to their conscience. That's right. Yeah. And, and, and so it's sort of like we no longer need laws written that tell us what to do because every single interaction, if we wish to know about it, we will know because, mm. and God will tell us. And God will tell each person the same thing on the same subject. And this is a very important thing to understand too. A lot of people think go by your conscience means I do what I want and you do what you want. And that's not what it means mm. from God's perspective. What it means is you're listening to what God says is true and you're deciding to do that. Yeah. That's what it means. Yeah. And, and this is where most people I feel are very distorted when it comes to the concept of conscience because they do have a, you know, they say, oh, my conscience bothered me about that. And you go to the next person, and the next person says, why would your conscience bother you about that? <laughs> that's not your conscience that's bothering yeah. either one of the people yeah. in, that, yeah. in that regard. It's other things, other mechanisms of the soul. When we're receptive to the conscience, and you and I are asking the same question on the same job, we are going to receive the same answer independently from each other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. Okay, we've got one important point that we want to make at the end mm -hmm. here, but I have a couple of clarifying questions. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so it sounds like, if I can try and summarise that, I have a receptor, everyone has a receptor within them. Mm -hmm. It's like a direct phone line to God on matters of truth. Mm -hmm. And if I'm sensitive to it, then I will, through that receptor, be able to perceive and know God's truth on any matter, be that my actions. With the caveat. Of course. That development is required, and particularly development in love is required to receive God's truth on certain matters. Yes. <laughs> so we've already said that there's some intellectual development that might need to occur, mm -hmm. um, but there's also this love-based development. All of those things are going to enhance our and our sensitivity and receptivity mm -hmm. to what the receptor is receiving. That's right. Is that correct? Okay. Yes. All right. N point of um, clarity. What's the difference between me receiving knowledge, knowing something for myself, and simply tuning into my conscience and feeling what God feels about it? There seems to me there's a difference there. Of course. You remember that, that God's communicating truth to you. What you do with it and how you feel about it is independent of that. So you knowing truth and actually believing it is an emotional process that you need to go through by yourself. God's not going to make you go through that process. Mm -hmm. That is a choice that you would need to engage to go through. Now, God's not going to force that process upon you all God's doing is supplying the information mm -hmm. and you have, through the gift of free will, the choice to decide what to do with it. Yep. Now, if you decide to absorb it and make it a part of your soul, that is a personal process that you need to go through, a personal emotional process you'll need to go through. And that emotional process will eventually cause you to act upon the truth you've received. Yep. Right? If you do not go through the emotional process and have it impact upon your soul, then it's highly unlikely, even though you might intellectually know mm -hmm. the truth, it's highly unlikely you will act upon it mm -hmm. because it's not yet entered your soul. It's not, you've not made it a part of your life. Mm -hmm. And I see a lot of people doing this with divine truth. They sit there and listen to it and agree with it mm -hmm. and never act upon it. Yeah. Now, those, those people have not yet had the truth touch their heart because if the truth touches your heart, you will act upon it and you will change. You will do things differently as a result of the truth entering you. But God is just sharing it with you. He's providing the information. He's not forcing you to go through an emotional process here. He's not forcing you to make it a part of yourself. Mm -hmm. 
All he's doing is providing you with the information and you need to decide what you're going to do with it. So uh, there seems to be a number of states I can be in. I can be completely closed to matters of truth, to absolute truth. I don't want to, I don't believe in it. I don't want to know about it. And in those cases, I'm going to be pretty closed to my conscience. Well, not necessarily because, see, it's hard to maintain that concept with everything. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So while you might go, oh, yes, I don't believe in any of this crap about, you know, spirits and any of these things about God, whatever. But when it comes to a relationship, you want one. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And in those cases, you will be potentially open to receiving God's truth on that particular matter. Yeah. So it's very unusual to find a person whose conscience, the mechanism by which they receive truth from God, is completely shut down and non-existent at all, right? Yeah, yeah. And and in fact, you'd have to you'd have to be a dead soul, and that was not is not possible, right? To actually be in that state, okay? Right. So you would say there's literally billions and billions, an infinite amount of degrees by which we listen to our conscience, yeah. and there's an infinite amount of subject areas by which we have the selection of listening to our conscience or not. Yep. The more subject areas that you're open to listening to, the faster your progress will be. Mm -hmm. The less subject areas you're interested in listening to, the slower your progress will be. And if you're trying to restrict it in specific subject areas, then your progress in those particular areas is going to be very stagnant. Yep. Right? But, but it's highly unlikely, and in fact physically impossible, for a person to not be responding to the conscience in some way. In some way. On some subject. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay then, so we, so let's say then there's a state where I can be listening to my conscience or hear what God's truth. Hear what truth, it says. Hear yep. what it says, yep. but I don't, that's all that's happening. Don't act upon it. Yeah, I don't, I don't do anything with it. I don't let it be absorbed in me, any of those things. I don't engage any process. Yep. Yep. Then there's a state where I can be learning truth about things. Mm -hmm. And then there's a state where I know things for sure. Which means you've had to make the emotional transition between hearing it and it becoming a part of you. Yes. Right. Yep. And are you saying that the conscience can help me to engage with that process of Well, the conscience it. actually can tell you, God can tell you through your conscience how to make it a part of you. Yes. But see, my, most people don't want to make it a part of them. That's the reason why they've chosen to ignore it. <laughs> it's like, it's like if, if God's truth is telling you that you need to share yourself with the world mm -hmm. and you feel that that's a very scary thing to do and that people will attack you and denigrate you and pull you down, then it's highly unlikely you'll engage that truth yeah. of God. <laughs> and actually act upon it. Yep. But it's only by acting upon it that you'll feel the benefits of it. Mm -hmm. And so it's not until we act upon the truths, even if we don't necessarily have any faith in them, yep. it's not until we act upon them that we will feel any benefit. So you can hear them and it still not really benefit you. Yes. Until you've chosen with your will mm -hmm. and exercised your desire mm -hmm. to actually act upon what you've heard. Yeah. And if we've heard, if we have just heard it, we can't say we know it yet. No. And this is where I see most people who hear divine truth think they know it and yeah. they don't yeah. because I don't see them acting on it. Yeah. And it's only when you fully act upon it that you begin to know it in your heart. Yeah. You've heard it. Yeah. And in most cases, many of them haven't even heard it from God mm -hmm. because their conscience is not open to hearing it from God. They've only heard it from me or mm. from some other person who's versed in that truth. Mm. They've not heard it from God. So, so the key here is to open your heart in such a way that you actually hear it from God. Then you don't need to hear it from me. Yeah. <laughs> right? Of course, there's always persons that are ahead of us on the road. And if we listen to them and trust them, it's always going to be much easier for us to open our conscience to God yeah. than it is if, if we had no person helping us. Helping us, mm. yeah. But whereas when we uh, receive God's love into our soul, we seek it and we receive it mm -hmm. through the receptor, that immediately has a transformative effect and that love cannot leave us again. That's right. 
when we're talking about receiving truth from God via the conscience, mm-hmm. you no, know, that's something that we are simply we have to have an open heart to hear it. Yes, it's in you know it's not a literal hearing, no, and it's not an intellectually based process. But it's not the case that that truth has now entered us and we know it and it will never leave us. That's, right. that's an additional process that we have to engage. Yeah, that being said, once we become intellectually aware of certain truths, Mm -hmm. it's very hard to ignore them after that. It's it's, it's a bit like, you know, if somebody tells you something that you never knew before, it's very hard to go, I'm going to try to unlearn or unhear that. (laughs) The the thing is that as soon as we do hear something, it is very hard to unhear it. So that's the beauty of the conscience. We hear things. And, and it's going to be very hard for us to unhear those things now. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, we're going to have to exercise quite a severe amount of denial to, to act as if we've not heard them. Yes. Mm. Yeah. OK, very good. All right. One last important point mm-hmm. uh, in the conclusion of our definition of the conscience. And that is, um, it's very common to sort of say on earth, oh, my conscience is bothering me, to, to make the conscience our own. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, to say it's mine and you've got your conscience. Mm. But really here we wanted to say that's not really correct terminology. Not really, no. Um, The reality is that God designed this mechanism that is in us, Mm -hmm. in our soul, Mm -hmm. to receive the truth. Um, But it's really God's gift. It's something that God's desiring to share. And unless God built that in, we wouldn't have a conscience. Yeah, well, let, let's put it more succinctly. Yep. Um, for the conscience to actually work as God designed it to work, and which now does work in every human, there had to be a number of things be, that are external to us, as well as something that's internal to us for us to for it to work. The thing that's internal to us as a part of this conscience mechanism is the receptor itself. Mm-hmm. So the receptor of truth, if you like that had to be developed inside of the human soul. There had to be a receptor created that allowed truth from God to actually hit the soul, to actually be heard by the soul. So that's number one. Secondly, there had to be, God had to have the desire to share truth. So the conscience wouldn't actually work at all if God didn't want it to work. Yeah. Whether it's in us or not, it wouldn't yeah. work. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because God created the mechanism by which only God can connect to this receptor and then if God said, oh, blow it, I'm not going to share anything, <laughs> then, then what would happen is this conscience, even though it's there, is like, it would be like it's not there. It yes. wouldn't be working. Yeah. <laughs> so God had to have a desire to make it work, uh-huh. to, to actually deliver the information constantly to the soul, uh-huh. right? for the receptor to actually receive information. There has to be a transmitter on the other end transmitting it. Yes. Third thing, there has to be laws that allow the the transmitter to get information to the receptor and god had to design those laws as well yeah so to say that the conscious mechanism is mine Mm -hmm. is really a bit of a misnomer while the receptor does exist in me yeah for the mechanism to work it requires a lot of external things besides myself yes for it to work and operate so mm. so so the fact is that it, it does work and operate for every human and it's to a large degree because of what God created externally to the human soul yep. that allowed the receptor to hear the information. Mm-hmm. So to call it my conscience when really it's a collaboration of yeah. things that are going on inside of me and other things going on uh, you know in the universe and things decided upon by God is, is really like not really understanding the full issue of the conscience. The second issue with regard to this, my conscience. When a person says my conscience, they're automatically implying your conscience. And they're automatically generally implying that my conscience might be different to your conscience. Oh, yeah, you're right? saying, yeah. That my conscience might operate in a different way and I might feel different things than you do when it comes to my conscience. That's not the conscience. Yeah. The conscience, as I've already stated, is clearly from is God's message to us about a truth on any matter. God speaks the truth consistently. He's not he doesn't vary it for one person and give a different truth to another. Yeah. 
So, so the fact is that if I feel I've got a different truth than you do, and I believe that's from my conscience, it's not from my conscience. It's from some other source yeah. inside of my soul. And so oftentimes when people use the term my conscience, what they're really referring to is not their conscience at all, but rather the emotional feelings they have, their predispositions based on their moral character and condition and their teachings and their childhood mm -hmm. that have established a certain set of belief systems which are all emotional but have nothing to do with the conscience. Yeah. And quite frequently that's how people refer to the conscience. The conscience, and that's not what we're referring to here. No. Here you're talking about something that's not under the control of my will, aren't you? You're saying it's... Well, I that's can, not strictly no, true. No, my sensitivity to it is under the control of my will. Correct. But you're saying that the mechanism is operating every single moment of every single day. Yes. And it's only my sensitivity that's under my control. And, and if you think about it, this is exactly what I'm saying about the receptor that receives God's love. It's there. It's operational in every person. It, it's under the control of mm. the soul by being under control of the desire of the soul. Yeah, so sure. It, so it works in exactly the same way. Yeah. These two mechanisms, the mechanism to receive truth and the mechanism to receive love, work the same way. Yeah. They are there, always operating. We only have to call on their operation and act upon the results. That's all we need to do. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And um, we said there in conclusion, my conscience... <laughs> is in reality a mechanism that requires external prodding to operate. Exactly. Well, in fact, it's not even prodding, is it? It's just a constant, <laughs> steady stream. It's a constant, steady stream of information. Yes. Yes. Um, so in some ways it could be called God's conscience or God's mind in me. Yes, and this is a nice way I feel to think about it, is that God has the ability to share God's mind with us through the action of the conscience. Now... We can't be completed in that process of having uh, God's mind completely with us unless we have also received God's love. And as we learned in our pageant message discussions this year, we have to receive the reception of God's love to the point of one with God results in us having the mind of God within us. And this is how it results. Mm -hmm. Through the, the operation of the constants there, conscience allows us to have God's mind on certain matters but it's not going to be God's mind on all matters mm. until we've become at one with God. Yeah. Then it will be God's mind on all matters. Yes. But we still need to receive the truth and act upon it. So while God's mind is conversing with our mind and telling us the truth, yes. it still needs to be a decision of our will, our desire, that is going to motivate our actions based yes. upon what we receive. And we can't really say we've received that truth until it's within our soul. Yes. And this receptor is not really, well, it's in our soul. It's not really. Uh, it's a distinction <laughs> that we can make between listening and hearing, isn't it? Yes. Like listening is just like, you know, you've, you've just, what, which, you know, in the first century, I used to say, you know, people have heard, but not really got the sense of it. You know, yeah. they're not really understood. Mm -hmm. When you truly listen, you get the sense of things and you understand. That is an emotional process that has to go on within the soul. Mm -hmm. And that and that can't happen where, independently or God cannot force it. Yeah. You have to choose to make that transformation within yourself to make that choice. Mm -hmm. So here we're not saying that just because you've heard the information, which we all have the capacity to do, yep. that you'll ever make it a part of you or listen and act upon it. And mm -hmm. um, hearing and then acting upon it are two completely different mechanisms. And the second requires a lot of sincere behavioral and emotional changes in yes. order to engage. Yes, mm -hmm. and, and really we're, we're saying that knowledge only comes through experience of a truth. Yes. Yeah. Not only just experience of the truth, but also, firstly, you have to have faith in it. Mm -hmm. So, so before you even uh, have an experience of it, you'd have to have faith enough to do it. Yes. And then, when you do it, the experience of it supports the knowledge that you've discovered. Yeah. And um, and this is where I see most people, you know, have a really f fall down when it comes to the operation of their constant conscience. They hear something, but because of their fears or their anxieties or their belief systems or whatever 
they don't act upon it. Mm -hmm. And as a result of not acting upon it, they don't ever receive the benefit of that knowledge. Yeah. So while the knowledge has been heard, it's not been listened to or yeah. acted upon. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. All right. Thank you. So that's what the conscience is. Eh? It's <laughs> like a very beautiful mechanism of God that that uh, is there for our development and welfare and ultimately for our happiness. Mm. It's, it, without it, it would be very, very hard for us to learn and assimilate all the things that God has prepared for us in terms of our knowledge and our experience. So it's, it's the best possible thing God could have done aside from giving God's love. Yeah. Um, it's the best possible thing God could have done is to open or create a pathway in us where God can communicate information that's truthful yeah. to us so that yeah. we can then choose to do something with it. Yeah, mm. yeah, okay. The conscience includes God and human participation. <laughs> <laughs> so is my conscience a part of me or a part of God? <laughs> <laughs> well, as we've already said, the conscience is not your conscience. It's a mechanism. Uh, the receptor part of it is yours. You know, it's the, the bit that causes the receiving of God's truth is yours. But, but without God sharing the truth, you wouldn't receive it. So, so it requires God participation as well as your participation. And in fact, also requires the laws by which God created for the conscience to be able to work, you mm -hmm. know, for, for there to be a flow of truthful information from God's soul to our soul. Yeah. So, so you could say it's a, it's a built-in receptor into each human soul that allows for the transmission of truth directly from God. That being the case, God's always sh like sharing the truth with the conscience mm -hmm. uh, through, the, through the mechanism of the conscience. So God's half of the mechanism is always working. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then there's the uh, laws, which are also under control of God, therefore always working, yeah. that allow for the tr transmission of truth from God's soul to the human soul. And the receptor that's on the human side, God created to be always working. Mm -hmm. So it's always working. You can't, you can't uh, stop it from working, just like you can't stop the love receptor that God has created in the soul from working. Mm -hmm. They're always working. All you can really do is detune from them. Mm -hmm. so, so you can actively or passively detune from the operation, deny its existence, deny what you're hearing from it, shut down what you're hearing from it and so forth. You can do all of that. Certainly you can do all of that. And um, which would then tend to indicate, and that's what causes us to believe it's my conscience. Because right. in a lot of ways, we have ultimate control over well, whether it works in the sense of whether it delivers the information that actually we act upon or not. <laughs> but, <laughs> gotcha. uh, but in terms of it working, well, that's, uh, you know, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a mechanism that involves a lot of different constituent parts of which one at the transmission end is God, one at the receiving end is our soul, and in the middle is a lot of laws <laughs> that yeah. govern the flow of the information. Yeah, gotcha, yeah. gotcha. Yeah. So really, we could say that the conscience is a mixture of human elements uh, that God designed and put into the soul. So the, the receptor part. Yes, which God designed. That's the important part. Yep. You know, so, so God put it there in the first place. Without God putting it there, it wouldn't even be there. That's right. <laughs> uh, God's laws, which allow this transmission to happen. Which God also designed. And if God hadn't put them there, it couldn't happen. Yeah. <laughs> God's truth. Yes. Which is coming from God. So that's a part of God that God wants to transmit to humans. And mm -hmm. without God having it or having the desire to transmit it, it, the conscience couldn't happen. Yep. And God's love. Yes. So without the desire for God to share the information. Which is God a loving wishes, desire. Which is a loving thing to do. Yep. It wouldn't happen either. Yes. Yeah. So th there's really almost, you could say, four parts or four elements mm. that make up our conscience. Mm. One, let's start with the top level, God's love, which is really, it's an expression of God's love, all these other things. Mm -hmm. God's truth, uh, which is coming from God, which mm -hmm. is being received by the conscience. The laws that enable the transmission, if you like. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then this receptor, which God has designed and placed into the soul at the time of creation. Yes. Now, 
all of those things make up the conscience. So they're all the parts mm -hmm. of the conscience. And really the point you're making is that the, the part that is even a part of my soul is not really under my control in that I can tune it out. Mm -hmm. um, I can't turn it off. I can't it's turn it switch. off. <laughs> it's not really something that's under a will-based control. The only thing I can do is, with my will, detune from it, ignore it, try and not have it. Yes. But it won't ever not exist. Close the door on it. Yes. We can do that. Yeah. But it is a part of my soul. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. And so, as soon as you recognize that, yeah and start to really in tune into it, you'll, you'll rapidly see that it is a part of your soul. Just like as soon as you recognize God's love is available to you and tune into that, you'll rapidly see that's a part of your soul yes. too. And it's always been there. Yeah. It's yeah. Just, just not used. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And so, and there we need to delineate and so we can detune or tune in to the, to this receptor. Um, that's a part of me and that's under my control whether I want to tune in or out. Mm. But even say I'm tuning in to this knowledge that I'm receiving, yep. it is still not knowledge that's within my soul. My conscience, no. this conscience information is not really mine. Not yet. It's no. still God's. It's still God's. Yeah. It's still God's and it won't become yours until you actually do something about it, until you emotionally absorb it mm -hmm. and act upon it then it becomes yours Good day. but but no, before then it's always just information yeah. and and nothing more than information truthful information of course yeah. that comes from the supreme being of the universe so it's quite important truthful information <laughs> <laughs> but not not uh, anything more than that very good mm. <laughs> what the human conscience is not <laughs> So in today's discussion, we're obviously defining the human conscience as God defines it. Mm. Uh, but there's a lot of ideas on the planet about what the conscience is. There's, yes. there's psychological frameworks to explain the conscience. There's religious ideas about what forms the conscience. Yes. There's developmental ideas and developmental context that the conscience is discussed in. Yes. And so let's talk about the the things that are wrong in those in those mm -hmm. um, ideas and concepts that are on the planet at the moment. Sure. Okay. It's important for us to see what the world thinks the conscience is and compare it with what the conscience really is, because this is where a lot of confusion results, in fact, yes. about the operation of the conscience. Yes, and when we mention the word conscience, it, it conjures up something different for everyone. Of course. And so we want to try yeah. and be as clear as possible. Yeah, and as yeah. specific as possible about it. Yeah. Mm. Okay. The human conscience is not the same as receiving God's love. Yes. So it's important to understand here that God's love is not available to us unless we have a sincere desire and longing for it. Mm -hmm. God's truth is available to us at any time, whether we have a sincere desire or longing for it or not. Well, and in <laughs> fact, you're saying it's being delivered to us whether we like it or not. That's right. It's, a, it's an antenna that's always working. Right? Yeah. And it's pro there's a certain part of that that is also truthful about God's love in that God's love is being delivered to us any time, but we're just not receiving it. We're not allowing it into the soul and allowing its transformative effects. So it's very similar to that in, in uh, God's truth is similar in the sense that the conscience mechanism, the receptor part of the conscience mechanism, we, we do have a degree of control over in the sense of we can tune out of it or mm -hmm. allow it in, mm -hmm. right? But it's different than the love mechanism because love is, is an emotion. Yeah. The truth can be just information yeah. and it doesn't have to at yet, as yet be emotional. Mm -hmm. and, and, and we have to go through other things to make it emotional, to make it a part of us. Whereas with the love, just opening yourself to it and and allow and having a desire, an emotional desire for it is going to cause a reception of the emotion of love. Mm -hmm. So so they are different in some ways in the way they operate, but they are similar in other ways in the mm -hmm. sense that they there are receptors built into the soul that are always on. Mm -hmm. It just it depends on how we exercise our desire as to what happens to them, gotcha. what happens to the information flowing through them. Okay. Okay. Uh, the human conscience is also not to be confused with receiving direct information. Sometimes that could be even truthful information. Sometimes or not. not. <laughs> um, from spirits who are claiming to be God. 
Yes, there's plenty of spirits in the spirit world who would like to believe that they have a superior amount of knowledge to yourself, mm -hmm. particularly towards people who, who live on earth. And those particular spirits will frequently even claim that they are gods or God, you know, a part of God or whatever. Whatever their beliefs are is what they will claim. And, and those particular spirits may be able to share information and can share information. There's a receptor in your spirit body through which they can actually transmit information through into your, into your brain and into your phys spirit body's mind. That's not the same as your conscience. That, that's another person, basically, a spirit sitting on your shoulder telling you what he thinks. Yeah. And that's not the same as what the conscience is. Okay. And we need to understand that because a lot of people think their conscience is telling them to do something when actually it's a spirit telling them to do something. Yeah. And, and in our next session, so not today, we're going to talk about how we can actually become more sensitive to what is our conscience and mm. what is not our conscience. Mm. Mm. Yep. Okay. Um, the, the, or, the human conscience is also not to be confused with our emotional responses to truth. So sometimes we feel guilt or shame or anger or, or fear in response to hearing truth. Mm. And very often that's what I would call my conscience bothering me, mm. those feelings. But we're saying yes. here, no, that's not your conscience. Yes, it's not a, really a true statement to say that your conscience bothers you. <laughs> Although it can sort of, the truth can bother you. Yes. But the truth you receive through the conscience can bother you. Yeah. So, so the conscience itself is not going to bother you. The truth that you receive through it may bother you, depending upon your emotional condition and upon the emotional error or the belief systems that already exist inside of you. And that is certainly true. Yeah. But to say that the conscience itself is bothering you, no, the conscience is just a mechanism. It can't bother anybody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the conscience itself, also you're saying here, doesn't deliver emotion. It's a, it doesn't deliver emotions no, like anger or guilt no. or shame. And it's not God's You way could say, of... though, that it does deliver God's emotions or it's capable of delivering God's emotions about things. Mm -hmm. So, in other words, it deliver, if you ask God how he feels about such and such, Yep. You will get a feeling that will yes. from God through the conscience that will show you how God feels about such and such. <laughs> Good. <laughs> but that's not your feeling. No. Yeah, there's a big delineation between your feeling and God's truth, God's feelings. Yes. Mm. And we also need to make the point that when God is transmitting truth to us in these ways, it is not in an effort to make us feel anything. Anything. <laughs> exactly. Be that guilt, shame, happy, sad, afraid, devastated. Exactly. Whatever. It's yeah. you can think of it as God just presenting the facts. <laughs> he doesn't have an emotional context for those facts. Yeah. Right. Although God does have emotions about how things happen, mm -hmm. and if you ask God for the fact about His emotion about something, He will tell you that too. Mm -hmm. So He can tell you facts and. He can tell you the facts about how he feels about something as well through yeah. the operation of the conscience. But how you respond to that yourself, that's completely up to you. <laughs> yeah. Gotcha. <Yeah. laughs> okay. All right. The human conscience is also not to be confused with our emotional responses to religious, political, societal, or parental beliefs and actions. All of those um systems of belief and uh, ideas are human creations. And so very often when we are taught a lot of those systems or we grow up in a lot of those systems of belief, when we hear about things like sex before marriage or homosexuality or, um, you know, going against your parents' wishes or choosing a partner that your parent doesn't agree with or choosing a profession that your parent doesn't agree with, Sometimes we start to feel things and we can confuse that with our conscience. Mm. But that is not our conscience. No, if you examine all of these things, you, you've got religion, psychology, parents, polit politics, and in fact, all forms of, of human endeavor have human creations associated with them that have no resemblance to God's truth whatsoever. 
and uh, never will have. But because they have entered us emotionally, we do now, when we receive God's truth about those particular matters, we have emotional reactions. Yeah. And also when we receive, uh, and oftentimes when we receive God's truth about those things, we think God's truth is wrong mm. because of the predisposition we have to these other things. And so many people call this moral state where we believe the human sense of morality yes. um, as their conscience working. So, so many will say, in good conscience, I can't get married. I can't have sex with you before I'm married. Let's mm-hmm. say a Christian might say that. Or a, a Muslim might say that to you. In good conscience, I can't have sex with you before I get married. But having sex before you get or after you get married, God, uh, marriage is really an immaterial thing to God. Right? God's designed two halves of the soul. And from God's perspective, the only person you should be with anyway is the other half. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it'd be more true to say, I shouldn't have sex with you unless I know you're the other half of me. Yes. <laughs> you know, that would be probably a more accurate thing to say from God's perspective, but yeah. most people don't do that. So, so uh, the human construct or the human belief or definition frequently is, is inculcated upon us uh, during our childhood with a lot of emotional baggage at- associated with it. And what that does to us is cause us to believe as adults that when our conscience bothers us, we call it our conscience bothering us, that it's actually our conscience. Mm-hmm. But it's not. It's just the, what's bothering us is this whole heap of human constructions inside of us that we've not let go to determine what is God's truth about any yeah. of those matters. Yeah. So that's a very, very different mechanism to our conscience. It is actually emotional error that exists within us that precludes us from accepting the truth that God is offering through our conscience, Mm -hmm. which Mm. is very different to actually listening to the conscience. Mm. And so we're starting to get quite a refined picture now of what the conscience is really all about and uh, essentially how little we are in touch with our conscience for most of us. For most of us. Because these other things are operating in us. And Well, as we'll see later, we have a discussion about how it's happened, but but to just to just briefly um, during our childhood most of the time we have been taught and 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 it's been insisted that we accept the parental constructs that we accept the society constructs and that we accept our religious constructs and the society norms Mm -hmm. now now once we've gone through the process of emotionally accepting these particular errors which of which most of them are we end up with a whole set of belief systems inside of us that then when the truth gets said, it, it obviously confronts the error within us and, and then we are bothered with the error. Now, yeah. most people in that state will continue to listen to the error for a time until they see the pain the error is causing. Yes. And then they release that error and then they're open to receiving communication via their conscience from God. Mm. Um, But until that time, what they're really doing is imposing those societal, law-based, parental-based, religious-based constructs upon themselves and then calling it the conscience. Yes. And it's not. Yeah. 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 And it can feel confusing coming. Learning um, about the conscience. <laughs> well, from that it, it's state. only confusing if you haven't received any of God's love exactly. in a lot of ways. Yep. Because if you've ever had a loving relationship with anybody, including God, but also any other person, a truly loving relationship as God defines it, many of those societal norms, parental constructs and religious constructs would all be dissipating anyway, mm. because you'd automatically start to see them as false and you'd work through them emotionally. Yeah. So, so usually with any human creation that's in error, the universe itself is already geared to destroy it. Yeah. And eventually it will be destroyed from within us. Mm-hmm. So, so it's not something that we'll be retaining forever, but we have to allow the process of the destruction of those constructs. And frequently we don't because we have huge societal and religious and uh, parental pressures yes. upon us to not change those particular belief systems. And until the society changes and then, you know, our, our parents die and they leave and then the religion changes its idea frequently. We don't change. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Okay. Um, 
so it, the human conscience is also not to be confused with emotionally feeling bad or feeling good about thoughts, beliefs, desires, words, or actions. So these are just our emotional responses based upon internal soul-based mechanisms triggered by soul-based con conditions, many of which are based on the absorption of emotional error during childhood. So you really just said that in our previous point as well. Haven't well, no, you? the point I wanted to make here is that there's this thing about feeling bad or feeling good. Most people feel nowadays that, uh, you know, if something makes you feel good, you should do it. And if something makes you feel bad, you shouldn't do it. Now, there's some serious flaws to this kind of thinking because really these are just uh, feelings, emotions that are within you. They've got nothing to do with God's truth about the matter. Yep. They're only feelings you have. Now, you'll feel good about certain things if your parents felt good about those things, whether they're wrong or right. And, it, and if society feels good about those things, you'll probably feel good about them too, whether they're wrong or right. And if your religion feels good about those things, whether it's atheism or a religion, then it's probably that you'll feel good about those things, whether they're wrong or right, or whether they're truthful from God's perspective. So this is the problem, is that if we're just trusting whether we feel bad or feeling good, and mm -hmm. thinking that's our conscience, mm -hmm. it's not our conscience, that's our personal opinions mm -hmm. being validated or invalidated by the world around us. That's all it is. And that's not necessarily the same as our personal opinions being validated or invalidated by God's opinion. Right? And we need to understand the difference. So, so it's very important for us to see that feeling bad and feeling good aren't great measures sometimes about our behavior or actions and are not good measures about whether we have, you know, a conscience in operation or not. Yes. Mm. Yes. So, so just basing, uh, basing the awareness of the conscience on uh, an abiding sense of feeling good or an abiding nagging feeling of feeling bad, you're saying is not reliable. No, but if, if, if we look at some examples, let's say, nowadays the medical profession has established that smoking is harmful to your health. Now, most people who continue to smoke think it makes them feel good. So they're there smoking, feeling good. So they could say their conscience is telling them that it's okay to smoke, right? It's not their conscience telling them that. It, it's their addictions telling them that. Yeah. <laughs> a person who drinks too much is the same. The drink makes them feel good. It makes them av avoid specific emotional conditions from their childhood, their sadness and so forth. It helps them avoid all of that. So when they have a drink, they might feel good. If they're just governed by the process of feeling good, they could say their conscience is telling them to have a drink because it's okay. It's going to make them feel good, right? That's not what God's telling them about drink. It's about what they are telling themselves about drink yeah. and they're wishing it to be validated yeah. by some internal mechanism. That's all. Sure. So, so we need to, we can see with those physical addictions, that's the case. So obviously it's also the case with uh, other addictions, love-based addictions and uh, so-called so -called love-based addictions or emotional addictions. Obviously, when we feed our addictions, we feel good, but it doesn't mean that God's not telling us actually that addiction is way out of harmony with truth and yeah. way out of harmony with your happiness in the long term. Mm -hmm. so, so we've got to be careful about this feeling good, feeling bad analysis because a lot of times we feel good just because we're meeting addictions. And that's got nothing to do with God's truth. And it's also got nothing to do with the operation of the conscience. In fact, we're ignoring our conscience under those circumstances. Good eye. Yeah. All right. All right. And the conscience is also not to be confused with having poor self-esteem or self, poor self-worth. Yeah. Now, what do we mean by that? Well, and today, uh, the way a lot of parents have learned to control their children is to impose upon the child a feeling that the child is unworthy unless the child agrees with the parent mm. or unless the child agrees with society or unless the child agrees with the religious constructs and so forth. Now, it, by being taught we're unworthy, we naturally now have associated our worth with our absorption of truth. So in other words, when a truth comes to us, right, externally, from an external source, you, you know, someone telling it or from God's operation upon the conscience, we can react very badly to it because of the fact that we have attachments to false beliefs and worth. Worth and false beliefs are linked together. In other words, 
I believe that if I, as long as I do what mummy and daddy want me to do, then I'm a good person, for mm -hmm. example. Now, the, the true conscience, the op operation of the conscience upon our receptor of the, you know, that God communicates the truth through, that doesn't have these emotional constructs uh, associated with it. These emotional constructs are only based upon our emotional injuries from our childhood, established usually, firstly, through our relationship with whoever brought us up, our parents generally, and or our relationship with our religion or our or society generally. And we need to understand that poor p condition of self-worth frequently means that something bothers us when actually from God's perspective, it shouldn't bother us at all. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So, you know, and, and in fact, you can feel pretty unhappy with yourself 90 to 100 percent of the time, but that's not your conscience bothering you. Yes. So uh, the average religious person, if they had sex before marriage, their conscience would bother them immensely. Right. If they were truly of a religious faith that believed in these particular things of fidelity before marriage and so forth. Their conscience would bother. That's them. what they would say. Right. <laughs> they would say, yeah. con my conscience bothered me about that. I need to confess about that. I've done the wrong thing. That's what they would say. <laughs> From God's perspective, they haven't necessarily done the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. It just depends on why they engaged sexually, what, whether love was involved in the process, and whether it was with their soulmate, and a number of other issues that is going to be reflected in God's communication to them, right? Yeah. But because uh, the average person has worth associated with their religious beliefs, in other words, they feel good when they obey the religious beliefs and they feel bad when they don't. Gotcha. Right. And many religions prey upon that. You know, Catholic faith is frequently called the guilt religion for that reason. And you can see that there's an emotional response inside of the person based upon what the religious construct or the parental construct has taught them. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately it's not god's truth yeah and therefore it's not the conscience bothering them yeah it's their fear of the confrontation between what they did and the religious or parental or some childhood construct that they have within them yeah that's bothering them yeah 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 okay so that's a really good summary of what the conscience is Isn't. not and it's also uh we've covered a lot of things that people commonly think is their conscience but in fact uh we're saying that's not it, there's yes. something else entirely. So in, in summary, we probably need to bear in mind that truth that we said, and that is if you and I ask God through the operation of our conscience the same question on the same subject, we will get the same answer. Mm -hmm. And and if we're getting different answers, it means one or both of us are out of harmony with the God's truth and therefore out of harmony with listening to our conscience. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> how the conscience operates. <laughs> so how does the human conscience operate? Well, I, su I suppose we first need to refer our listeners back to three or four discussions we had at the beginning of this session, which are all either being clipped or part of this session. And that is the discussions about reminders about truth, reminders about love, reminders about law and how the soul operates. So, so what we need to do is refer them back to that information if they haven't already seen that information before they listen to our answer here about how it operates. So the first thing obviously is that God created the soul with the receptor, the receptor of truth, mm -hmm. which is the human part of the conscience mechanism. God created the laws which allow for the human to receive truth from God, from receive truth, if you like, from a source outside of the universe itself. So that's the laws. Then, of course, God is, the, is a part of the entire conscience mechanism as well. God has to transmit truth and want to transmit truth yeah. in order for the soul, the human soul, to be able to receive it. So this means that the conscience mechanism is a combination, a merging of all of these different factors, which then allows for the human soul to receive truthful information from God. So at this stage, all we're doing is receiving information. We've not yet acted upon it. We've not yet done anything with it. So, so all the conscience mechanism does is allow us to receive the truthful information from mm -hmm. God. That's all it really does. Okay. So that's how it's operating. 
physically and emotionally, yeah. there's a steady stream of truth coming to our soul yeah, from, from God. God. Now, God also designed the soul with some other characteristics, the human soul with some other characteristics. One of those characteristics is a passionate desire for truth. Now, any person can see that in a child who has not been harmed, because the child goes, why this, why that, why, why is that happening? What's going on here? What's going on there? They're so inquisitive, asking questions all the time. Mm -hmm. And as the child grows up, they learn to not ask questions, unfortunately, because of how they've been treated. But initially, they're always insistent on knowing the answer to why yes. everything works. And this is because the soul has been designed with a natural inquisitive nature. Mm -hmm. So that's also a requirement. If the soul, if the conscience is going to have any effect on us, we need to listen to our natural inquisitive nature and, and desire the answer to questions. So how it works is we've got this mechanism in place, but without the soul having an inquisitive desire to know, how do we receive information? We can't. We must first have an inquisitive desire to know and ask the question. Mm -hmm. Once we ask the question, now we can receive the answer. Yeah. <laughs> so it's quite simple, I suppose you could say, but, but and it might seem obvious, but unfortunately many of us stop asking questions <laughs> yes. of God and of ourselves and of others. Yep. And we stop asking questions at a very young age because we're so afraid of the responses we've received to our questions in the past. So you're saying really that there's a steady stream of truth that is coming to us based on what we're thinking of, what we're doing, what we're acting, what we're wanting. There's truth about every every part of our experience coming to us all of the time. Mm -hmm. But unless we have some kind of inquisitive desire to know more about what we're doing, what we're thinking, what we're acting, what we're wanting, what we're not only, seeing, not, not what only we're we, we, hearing. We. Not what, only we, 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 or me, 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 yeah. but also what's happening over there and what's happening yeah. over here and what's happening in the universe there. Yes. These are all questions that God, through this mechanism, can answer. Can answer. So anything, anything in our experience, unless we are asking a question, whether it's formulating it intellectually or just having emotional. an emotional inquisitiveness about it, yeah then we are not going to start to engage with the operation of the conscience. It's Correct. operating, but we're not engaged with it. We're not aware of it in no, any way. it's not affecting level. us in any way, yeah. markedly, our yes. soul development in any way. Got you. Yeah. Got you. The next thing we need to bear in mind is that uh, although the conscience is a part of our design, there has to be some level of self-awareness in the end in order to use it properly. So, so, for example, in a child, the child has a very sensitive conscience but has no education yet about how to use it, right? And, and initially it's, it's used by the desire of the child. So they start asking why, the, you know, this desire that was built into the soul, they start asking why. Now they're using it, now that, but they don't know what questions to ask necessarily. But then as they build upon a foundation of knowledge, they, they become more aware of the answers and now they can formulate further answer questions mm -hmm. that involve more in-depth or more detailed knowledge. Yeah. Right. So the child is not has, does not necessarily have the capacity at the beginning to answer the same detailed questions, ask the same detailed questions as, a, as, a, as an adult who is open or sensitive to their conscience can ask. Mm -hmm. So the child must learn how to develop itself. And in the development, which is a part of its education, Yes it then can learn, oh, I could ask this question, and so it does. Oh, I could ask that question, and so it does. Yes. And until you know you can ask a certain question, or until you can formulate the question, you don't know what to mm. do with your questions. Yeah, because you said previously children are always asking questions, but they're not necessarily having, the additional point you're making here is they're not necessarily having the complex reasoning skills to ask a certain level of question. Yes, yeah, so for example, you, you could say, um, is the colour over there red? And if it's red, the answer would be yes, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And there's a simple, truthful answer. However, it's not, it doesn't contain all the truth mm. because, because to, for, for us to determine red, we really must know everything about infrared, ultraviolet and visible spectrum light. Yep. We must understand how our eyes determine whether something is colour compared to its shade and we need to understand how our brain processes that information. And we need to understand that we've just labelled it red, 
right? And there's a whole heap of other things we could ask questions about in the question about red, the colour. Yep. And, and, and this is where a, a person with more education can go, oh, I need to ask this question, I need to ask this question, I need to ask this question, and so forth and so forth. And, and as such, they're building on their previous uh, library of knowledge that's now internal to them. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm. Okay. Yep. The other thing we wanted to say was that it's this is an emotional transmission. While we're saying it's factual and it's truth-based, it's not love-based, there is an emotional component because it's coming from God and everything about God is emotional. That's right. Primarily. God's truth yeah. is emotional. It's going to have emotional impact upon us. So, And the truth is we part of this mechanism allows us to say what it, what does God feel about specific subjects uh, as well. So it, it is an emotional communication method. Our emotional response, though, is different to the actual communication. No, yes, that's right. And so we're really just saying here it's the sense of the truth is emotion-based. It's not, uh, so I might feel the truth about something um, and then have my own emotional response the, it's the feeling of the truth that's how the conscience is operating. Yes, yeah, so, but it but also it's... can transmit information without there being emotions con uh, to, with it because to a degree there are some facts about the universe that uh, God's always enthusiastic about what God's done, so yes. don't, don't assume otherwise. Yep. But, but there are many emotions God has about the facts of the universe that God thinks this is fantastic, right? <laughs> Look at what I've done here, it's pretty cool. And, and we will get that feeling along with uh, the communication of truth as well if we allow that feeling to occur. Uh -huh. But we, here I guess um, I'm trying to help people understand and to understand it's not a thought, it's not like I go, hey God, how's the colour blue composed? And I get uh, a factual data driven answer. It can be. It can be. Mm. Yep. It can be, but if we're close to God's feelings, yep. it's going to be difficult for us to receive the answer. So I could say, what's the lifespan of the green tree frog I just saw out my back door? And yep. I get six months. Yep. No emotion involved. That's right. Good eye. Yep. Just check it. If that's the truth. Obviously, I've got no idea. You could then the go truth, but... and investigate it. Yep. And watch one from life cycle to you know from tadpole to end of its life. Yeah. Couldn't you? And then establish it as truth in your heart. Yes, of course. Yeah. You, you you're only hearing it when you hear it. Mm -hmm. You're not establishing it. To establish it, remember we've said already, establishing it requires a different process. Yes, I was just trying to understand the content of the communication. Mm. So you're saying it can be purely intellectual. Yeah, yeah, yeah it can. Well, it, God's communication is always emotional, but whether we feel God's emotions while he's communicating the intellectual component, well, that depends a lot on our openness to God's emotions. Yeah. So, and it doesn't stop just because we're not open to God's emotions. Got to, got to. So I can, I can be pretty, pretty detuned emotionally and mm -hmm. still hear God's opinion. You can. Yeah. You can. But... You've got to then, what are you going to do about it? Most, most people who are detuned emotionally are detuned emotionally for a reason. And those reasons usually revolve a lot of hurt and a lot of belief systems that are false within them. Mm -hmm. and, and as such, those belief systems and that hurt is going to influence greatly how much we're closing the door on God's truth that's coming through. The... Because, because more truth might trigger more emotion Correct. and then we might, got you. Correct. Yeah, so, got you. so there's a high likelihood that the more closed down emotionally you are, yep. the less in tune with your conscience you will also be got you. Got for that you. reason. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Awesome. Yep. So um, that's a bit about how the operation and it's it's difficult to talk about. I feel like we're defining and talking about the operation through all of these questions, actually. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Well, what we're trying to do here is give our listeners a very like a fairly good introduction to the concept of the conscience mm -hmm. and help them understand that this part of themselves is there available to help them in the system. And for many people throughout their life, they have been using it, but unknowingly. Um, and the key is to use things with consciousness, you know, with mm -hmm. some knowledge. And once we understand how it all works, we can start using this mechanism with some consciousness rather than just something that we sort of 
in a day's walk through life using, you know, yeah. not being aware of what's really going on. And sometimes using our conscience and sometimes using our family-based belief systems and not really understanding when which is which. That's yeah. right. And also not understanding that just because we've heard a truth from God, it doesn't mean we believe it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. There's many people who come up to me when they meet me first and they say, I know you're Jesus. Six months down the trap, they're screaming at me and telling me I'm a, I'm a charlatan. You know, that's because right at the initial point, they got confirmation from God, from God about what the truth is about my identity. But after that, it's triggered a whole heap of emotions, which they don't want to feel. And now they don't want to believe it at all. And they never did. Mm -hmm. Just because you receive a truth through your conscience, it doesn't mean you believe it. Mm -hmm. so you're, just, you're just hearing it, that's all. And, mm -hmm. and you're not, act, you know, it's not in your heart yet. To be in your heart, you're going to have to test things out. You're going to have to experience them. You can have to get emotional about that. So is it then the, um, the additional desire to be moral or ethical that would cause, it seems to me that I hear things from God through my conscience and I'm not necessarily emotionally open to them at that time, mm -hmm. but I can't dismiss them. Now, that seems to me to be more to do with an additional uh, or an, a desire within me to to be ethical or to be moral. That causes me then to not just sort of ignore that truth. C or, certainly, there's certain, is that, there is certain developmental qualities that occur yeah. within the soul, such as the development of ethics, yeah. which are going to make you more open to the reception of the, you know, the communication that's coming via the conscience. And not when you say open, not just open to hearing or receiving it but to actually acting in well, harmony with it or initially having you could say an inability it to ignore you, it. but yes. remember the bothering of you is due to some emotional condition inside of yourself it, in disharmony with the truth that you're receiving and often also feeling like it is true even though you don't want it to be true and things yeah. like that it's a disparity between a disparity. what i where i am at and what i've been told and then the, the yeah. only thing that bothers me is the desire to not have a disparity between how I am and what I believe is loving and truthful. Well, it might not be the only thing that bothers you because you could have pain um, that you now become aware of that is there mm -hmm. in you because of your behaviour. Yep. And you could see that if you did believe that thing that you were told that you wouldn't have that particular pain, but you do have that pain, yeah, so what yeah, do you do yeah, about yeah, it now? Yeah, yeah. Now it's motivating you to some action, and frequently it's motivating you to action you don't want to take. <laughs> so naturally that's going to bother you <laughs> yes. until you get to the point where you want to take it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So so that's, that's the way that our conscience can operate to actually bring about change in our life, mm. but it does require an additional component, whatever that is on our part, not just the hearing yeah. or the reception. That's right. We, we need to hear it, but yeah. we need to then, what are we going to do about it? That, that's when it starts really bothering us. You know, it's us being bothered by our own internal mechanism, really. Mm -hmm. It's not the conscience bothering us. It's not that God's bothering you. The truth has automatically now been heard and what do you, you know, when the truth is heard and you've got error within, now you're going to be bothered mm. Mm. <laughs> until that error leaves you. <laughs> yeah, I suppose what raised me, I brought that up because you were just giving the example earlier that, you know, you could hear it and just dismiss and ignore it. So, well, some can. Yes. Yeah, but that, that indicates a dark, large degree of determinant and a desire to completely ignore the information received. And that must come from a lack of value of something, a lack of value of. Well, not necessarily. It can just be a choice. You know, I'm on and a man. The first human couple made that choice to not listen to their conscience, not listen to the communication God had given them. They were perfect, mm -hmm. and yet they chose to not listen. You know, it doesn't have to be injury based. The no, I mean, oh, sorry. I mean, th they had another desire, didn't they? They had they did, a desire. Yes. So it's, it's contrary a, to to what their conscience was telling them. So it has to be desire based. Uh, function of the soul that either causes you to dismiss yeah, but, or uh, but, regard. Yeah, but we mustn't suggest to our listeners that it, it, the desire based might, is, is because of previous injury, because no. it's not. No, no. It, you can actually have a desire that's in disharmony with love without having a previous injury towards that desire. It, it depends on what you it, it, it encourage yourself to believe and feel. Yeah. And you can go through uh, things where you now want to do something that is 
you know, blatantly in opposition to what your conscience is telling you to do, but you want to do it anyway, mm -hmm. and you've never done it before. Mm -hmm. uh, you can do that, and, and many people do yeah. actually do that. Yeah. So you've got to be careful here. Uh, see, a lot of people believe that people only do bad things because they've been treated badly in the past, and that's not true. No. There are plenty of people that I've observed in human history who have done many bad things who haven't been treated badly in the past. Mm. So. So it got, does get down to our free will and how we exercise it. Yes, and that is what I was meaning because my desire to be ethical and moral was not necessarily uh, instilled in me not at all. in my childhood. Yeah. I see that as something that's my own. Correct. That I've developed. That just you've developed. Just like Amon and Amen developed a different desire. In an opposite direction. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's correct. Yeah. So, so yes, we, we can develop qualities and attributes inside of our own soul through our own choice, yeah. which will harmonise with the operation of the soul and the soul then with the operation of the conscience in mm -hmm. the soul and then the conscience can have an impact upon yeah. what we then choose to do that certainly yes. is the case yeah and um, we can also do the opposite we can choose to do things develop ourselves in such a way where we completely detune mm -hmm. from our conscience and it doesn't bother us <laughs> and it doesn't even bother us <laughs> yes. anymore is There's the way no, you see it yeah um, of course there is always some bothering of us. So yeah. what I've noticed is even some of the most wicked people I've ever met in the spirit world have always, as soon as they met you, been bothered with their conscience. Mm. Their reaction is frequently rage mm. rather than any humble reaction yeah. of wanting to do something other positively about the situation. Gotcha. But frequently people act in rage um, because there's the message from their conscience that's in direct contradiction to the feelings that they have inside of themselves and they would rather honour the feelings inside of themselves than honour the conscience and they feel this internal turmoil occur which then triggers their rage and causes them to attack the source of that information whether that be physical source or God, the conscience mechanism. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. Yeah, okay. Great, and we, that probably leads us on now. We're going to talk about some and just some other things, our emotional responses, but also we'll talk later on about, um, yeah. Just how how about. the conscience does it get detuned and distorted and yeah. so forth. These are yeah. all things we'll probably cover in our next session, you know, so yes. because and because we want to explain to people how that happened yeah. so that they can have some understanding of what went on in their childhood and their early development and so forth of how detuned we can become. Yeah, mm. yeah.